Bonjour everyone and welcome back to the ways of your soul. I am super excited to be offering today's pick a card reading which is going to be about what makes you unique, what makes you special and we're going to be looking at pretty much your magician archetype, diving deep into what makes you stand out, what makes you unique, what are your unique abilities, your inner powers and all of those things that you can pull from to help you in life. This is actually a very special tower reading because even though it stands on its own, it is also part of a larger project I'm offering on my channel where I am doing one pick a card reading based on every single major arcana card of the tarot. So we're going to be doing 22 pick a card readings overall. I've called it hashtag your fool's journey. If you're unsure about what that is, I'll make sure to leave my little intro video in the cards. You can check it out. And as you might have guessed from seeing today's choices, the reading for today is actually inspired by the magician card. So this is where you're going to be looking at what makes you unique, your special abilities and kind of exploring your particular magician archetype. I've already done a full inspired tarot reading which I leave in the cards if you want to check that out after. I'm just personally so excited to be dedicating myself to this project of offering 22 tarot readings inspired by each major arcana because I think it's going to be very profound and hopefully will bring you a lot of value. So if you don't know how pick a card reading works in front of you, you can see three different piles. Each pile is going to contain a different message and all you need to do is intuitively choose the pile that is calling out to you as that is where your message will be. In the description box you will find timestamps for each of the pile that will take you directly to your reading. You'll also find all of my other social media links. So for today we have three different tarot decks and I'm offering for you to decide through choosing your favorite magician. Obviously as this is a tarot reading inspired by the magician archetype, today we have three different magicians. So this is going to be my pile number one, this is going to be my pile number two and this is going to be my pile number three. You can take a little moment, figure out which magician is calling out to you you're of course welcome to watch more than one pile and as always I want to remind you that even though tower readings can bring guidance can bring comfort also bring us sometimes direction to what could be our next steps you always remain the captain of your own ship so please take what resonates with you and leave the rest today to help you choose I'm also going to pull a little crystal card to go with each card so in case you're not sure which one is calling out to you yet we will pull a little crystal card and also I'm going to read to you a little magician poem so that while you are looking at the different piles and thinking which one is calling out to you I'll set the intention for the reading and I'll read to you a poem inspired by the magician card from a book called Fortunate Tarot Poetry. So for my pile number one you also have Citrine Success. Beautiful. For my pile number two you can also choose thanks to Herkimer Expansion. And finally pile number three we have blue calcite peace. And now while you take a second for you to decide the pal calling out to you, I'm going to read to you the magician poem called the intention for the reading. Magician, ponder into your tool belt and pull out a few things. Trust in yourself and a love that knows no limits. Your ideas and thoughts permeate reality. They sprinkle themselves into mortality. They manifest their sequences through spirituality. This is your power as a human being. You bring in your actuality. Keep your intentions in line and you'll be just fine. So without further ado, let's get into your reading. Okay, my pal number one, welcome to your reading. So if you chose this particular magician, and this is actually from a tarot deck called the Stunning Tarot. As always, I'm going to put all the names of the decks I'm using in the description box because I'm a huge tarot lover, so I understand whenever you want to know which decks I'm using. Or if you chose this particular crystal card, which was the Citrine Success card, which is very appropriate for magician energy, then this is going to be the reading for you. So the first thing I want to do before we um, put some tarot cards and let me put the magician back in there is that I want to ask what is currently your magical archetype? What makes you currently unique? And then we'll use tarot to ask further questions. But I really want to get first of all an idea of around what is the magical archetype that you embody right now? In what ways are you shining your light right now? Number one, let's see 
what your current magical archetype is and we have two okay we have the entertainer and we have the mystic very interesting okay with the entertainer and the mystic the first thing that i'm hearing is that you are someone who is managing to get through difficult things in life by potentially being able to laugh about it to laugh about things in the face of adversity with the entertainer here to bring some levity and to and humor in difficult situations some people might consider that a little bit childish or immature you might have been judged for that in the past but actually being able to laugh about the situations or even ourselves when we are faced with difficult situation is very wise it takes a lot of wisdom to bring levity into a situation and to find humor in dark places because it's not that we're necessarily using humor to protect ourselves is that we are able to kind of like bring some lightness bring some levity into situations and that brings a new perspective that allows for hope to enter that allows for connection to enter because when we laugh about it usually it's like we are helping other people laugh with us so it's also a way to connect it's also a way to like share our burden and make other people feel better as well if they are going through a difficult time and you're able to see the silver lining so humor um, and just generally bringing levity into things could be one of your superpower which is very important especially in this day and age where the world is just so heavy everything feels like it's a trash can on fire being someone who can find a silver lining and who can make people laugh even though when they're going through difficult things it's healing it's a medicine and you should really hold on to that aspect of you it doesn't mean that you are superficial or anything like that though because we have the mystic so that's what i mean like i think truly your ability to make people laugh make people feel better maybe you're really good at telling stories maybe you're really good at like narrating things putting on a show in a way not in a negative way where it's like fake or but actually in the magician way because in the magician card you know the traditional magician he's there he's like calling people out look what i can do look how i can channel my power there's an outgoing kind of like showman way about the magician which is very leo so there might be some leo in like my number one pile not fearing the spotlight vibe is actually for a way for you to connect with others so it's not like you're showing off or it's not like you like to be at the center stage it's just that you naturally attract the attention you naturally attract people's um, ears you naturally like are able to entertain to make people feel better because it's also your way for you to connect to something deeper to your spirituality to your connection with others potentially where your intuition comes from too so that's what i was saying like with the mystic card there's a lot of depth there with you with my panel number one these steps might be hiding under a layer of um being the jokester or being the person who's a social butterfly or being the person who's always like making people feel comfortable maybe there's some extroverts in my panel number one but what people might not realize is that behind this layer of outward extroversion there's actually a lot of depth and a big connection to something deeper than yourself um, with the mystic card so you, what makes you truly unique right now again this is for right now you might watch this reading again in a year and your magical archetype will have changed but how you're dealing with life situations right now and what makes you unique is your ability to find meaning in the darkest places through your ability to also see lightness in the dark to also see humor in pain and to also find beauty in grief so i think my pal number one is actually very wise and your strong sense magical power really is your ability to understand duality that nothing is ever white or black that there's a lot of gray but amongst the gray this twilight zone is where you're able to find the joy the beauty um, the humor the lightness the community and that's where a lot of healing comes from so very beautiful very empathetic pile but also a pile that knows again how to make people feel good entertain people or how to just generally 
make people feel better about themselves when they're around you, your good vibes. And you know what? That's precious. And again, I said, like I said, there's a lot of medicine there. There's a lot of healing there for making people smile, for making people laugh. Um, it's precious gift and you should definitely nurture it. Let's now pull some cards around what are your unique abilities. Imagine like if you were a superhero, what would be your superpower right now? Three of swords, yeah. See, there's definitely, from my, and we have the star, yeah. My pile number one, you're definitely um, the kind of people that when people go through difficult times, they naturally come to you because you do have this unique ability to see the beauty in difficult situations, to find gratitude where most people would give up. In a situation where things are heavy or full of anxiety, stressful, painful, you have this unique resilience and bravery. And this is why I'm really getting Leo vibes. Some of you might be Leo Moon, Leo Rising, Leo Sun, let me know. Um, also, I'm getting Capricorn vibes for my pal number one, so let me know if that's also you. An ability to, in the face of challenge, Find the beauty, find the gratitude. Imagine it's like a huge downpour and there's a storm and there's like lightning bolts and you're drenched and it's muddy, everything sucks. You're able to, in like a live storm, find that one little beautiful flower that's growing thanks to the rain. You're able to find that one little beautiful rock on your path. It's a metaphor. It's the idea that when you're faced with difficult things, you are able to come through and find where the healing is, where the gratitude is, where the beauty is, where the joy is, where the levity, the lightness is. And I think, again, some of you might manifest that through your sense of humor, through your ability to gain perspective on things by laughing about it or making other people laugh about it, or just by generally being super optimistic, super positive. And that actually brings a lot of a healing because we have the star card which for me is where your key actual abilities is your ability my plan number one is to heal yourself and others and situations through finding the beauty in the difficult time through finding the silver linings through seeing the rainbow after the storm and that's very special like i said we need that kind of energy especially in a world that is determined to make us see only difficult things, darkness, pain. It's so important to still have people who hope, to still have people who connect, to still have people who laugh and who see joy in the simple things. So I think that's really your unique ability right now, my pal number one, and that is so, so precious. I want to ask now, what could you be doing to help you tap into this ability? Maybe this is something you have, you don't even really realize it. So what could you be doing to help you tap into this particular side of yourself, this healer side, this mystic side that comes from this fusion between the entertainer and the mystic? Let's see. Ten of cups, okay. What could help you tap into this particular side? Oh, that's way too many. Let's see, we have another one. Nine of swords and ten of cups. So what, yeah, I mean, there's two things that are coming through right now. What can help you tap into this like healer through laughter kind of shaman archetype? is through first community with the Ten of Cups, your desire to connect with others, your desire to spend time with your loved ones, your desire to spend time with your family, to nurture your relationships with your partner, your, your friends, all of that, your community is helping you to nurture this particular ability of you to make people feel better, to see um, the light in the dark. It's all coming through your relationships, through the people that you gather around you. Because like I said, I do feel like people tend to come to you naturally when they're going through something. It might even be that even colleagues when you're at work who you don't really necessarily know them. They're, let's say, like one of your colleagues suddenly go through a divorce, but you were never like close like that. They're going to be naturally attracted to come to you out of everyone to be talking to you about it. Because you do have this particular aura of just making people feel comfortable of, of making people being able to see the light in the situation of helping them giving them hope 
right? I'm, I'm being reminded of Pandora's box. And when she opens the box and all of the like turmoils and sadness and plagues are coming out, at the end in the box there is hope for what's left in the box, my Panama one. So people are naturally le like attracted to you because you're able to shine the light in the dark corners. And that's very comforting. The way for you to nurture that even more is through um, seeking community, seeking relationships, nurturing friendships, as well as I think it comes from yourself going through difficulty. Maybe that's where your ability to see the light in darkness comes from. It's because you've gone through shit yourself and, and you know what it's like to struggle and you know what it's like to be um, in like a massive life storm and you know what it's like to feel like life is crushing you and because you've gone through something very difficult yourself and you found the resilience in yourself to see light in that dark time to maybe even laugh about what's happened in some ways or at least to bring levity about it to find the lesson in what's happened with the mystic card i'm not surprised that some of you might have gone through very difficult times and that this is where your resilience but also your ability to be grateful for life simple things come from this is definitely what this nine of swords is giving me and that's kind of like is powering your um, unique abilities sometimes from life extremes difficulty we're able to find lessons at the end of the day you know there's never any mistakes always lessons so and i think my panel number one understands that very well what a beautiful reading for my panel number one i want to wrap it up and get like an affirmation or a message or a guidance from your inner magician just to see if your inner magician could speak to you right now which they are i mean we've got i feel like a good idea of what your unique power is right now and how you can tap into it from like i said my panel number one it's through community through finding power around what you've lived through yourself and through that you are alchemizing your pain turning it into gold and not only are you turning it into gold but you're also able to shine a light in other people's lives so truly beautiful beautiful reading for my panel number one i uh, beautiful energies you're really giving good vibes and i'm telling you and i don't even know you <laughs> because i can't see you but the energies feel very kind and supportive and just good vibes um, so I want to pull one last card around an advice from your inner magician like let's see if we can get a little message of guidance from your inner magician right now what they want you to know for from your inner magician we have everyone is on their own journey how can you focus more on your own path okay that is very interesting maybe because you have like i was saying um, this natural ability to be a good listener and to make people feel better and to make people laugh or just just being a, like a comforting presence people might sometimes take a little bit advantage of that and so there might be an advice from your inner magician to say right now you might benefit from putting some boundaries from thinking about yourself a little bit more not being selfish but just being a little bit more self centered self-conscious self-protective there's nothing uh, selfish about that it's actually a way for you to tap better into your inner power you might need to fill your cup a little bit more right now my panel number one before trying to fill others cups and i think that can definitely be sometimes the dark side of people who are very good at making others laugh and at seeing like the light and in, in the situation is that sometimes it can be harder to actually let yourself feel sad um, and feel like shit if you feel like shit and feel down if you feel down so this is your advice from your magician is just Give yourself a little time, focus on your own path. You don't always have to be there for everyone. You can also focus on you. And this is where a lot of your power will also come from. I think it's from what, again, once you've recharged your cup, you'll be able to show up in the world in a much more empowered way. So that's what I'm getting from my panel number one. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit of a look at uh, your inner magician. If you enjoyed it, please don't hesitate to leave my video a thumbs up. Keeps my channel alive, so I really appreciate it. You can also, of course, leave me a comment. I love to read you and I respond to all of my comments. 
And of course, if you want to join me on this journey for hashtag your fool's journey of watching all the 22 readings inspired by Major Arcana card, then I can't wait to see you in the next one. I'm so grateful and excited that we're doing this together. And until my next video, I want to send you so much good vibes and keep navigating the waves of your soul. Bye! Hey my panel number two, welcome to your reading. So if you chose this particular deck, which is actually called the Telesma Tarot. So if you chose this particular deck or uh, the Herkimer um, Crystal, which is linked with Expansion, then this is going to be the reading for you. As I explained in the intro, today's reading is inspired by the Magician Archetype, your Magician Archetype. We're going to be looking at what makes you unique, um, what are your unique abilities, all of that. But before we do that, and let me put the magician back in, I want to pull a card around finding out your magical archetype. Describe you in an archetypal way, like your particular magician archetype. What makes you unique at this moment in time? Of course, this is a general reading and this is going to apply to when you're watching. So maybe if you watch again in six months time, you might have changed. Maybe another pie will call to you. But for right now, I want to find out what makes you unique. What is your magician archetypes? In what ways do you shine your light at this moment in time? My pile number two. And we have the Pathfinder. Wow, beautiful. Okay. There's two things. First off, with the Pathfinder, there's this pioneer archetype, which is the idea that, that my pile number two, you might be someone who is not afraid to walk on unknown paths and to push the boundaries of what's been done and to tread unknown paths and to do things nobody before you has ever done to you live outside your comfort zone my pile number two there are at least this is where you thrive you are very talented at being an explorer being an adventurer not necessarily in the sense of like you travel around the world although some of you might be very into traveling but also it, internal internal exploration internal quest internal adventuring exploring facets of yourself pushing yourself to go beyond your comfort zone trying things that are maybe nobody in your family has ever done before pushing the limits as to what you and others thought you could do is very much at the center of your power my pal number two um with the Pathfinder, you light the way and then people follow. So you might be naturally born leaders. Maybe you at work, you're a manager, you have a team. Maybe you're a teacher in some way. Maybe you just are someone who helps others find their way through sharing your example. Maybe you are a self-entrepreneur, like you self-made person and people are looking at you as an example of wow they've done it so I can or maybe it's like in your family they people are coming to you for advice because they know that you have walked it you know it's not just for my panel do I'm hearing like you don't just say it you actually do the thing you said you were gonna do and that takes a lot of guts and that takes a lot of power so there's this definitely adventurer self-leadership kind of vibe from my pile number two um, and also we are seeing with this card this like shape shifting can you see they're turning into a lion so it might be that uh, you are obviously everyone is multifaceted um, we are human beings so we are made of a thousand million things <laughs> we are so complex but my pile number two you might be even more complex in the sense that you might hold a lot of different passions a lot of different hobbies and I sense that you break the boxes and the molds that society or people try to put you in it I'm gonna give you an example there's this like stereotype that um, people who are I don't know doing a lot of sports might not be um, really into reading that stupid archetype it's a stereotype it's very hurtful but it's just something that you know we've been told since we're children it's like either you like books or you like but or you like sports well my part number two you might love sports you might love books you might love traveling you might love learning new languages you might love pottery you just are this like extra complex multifaceted being who doesn't just fit into one category one box one thing so i'm getting massive aquarius vibes i'm getting aries vibes 
And there might also be some Virgos here as well. So let me know if you're like Sun, Moon and Rising in any of those, but that's the vibe I'm getting. Obviously you don't have to have be those things, but I'm just getting those vibes. The world cannot tell you what to do. You tell the world what you're gonna do. And when the world tells you that can't be done, you're like, hold my beer <laughs> and you do it anyway. That's your superpower, my palm too. Or at least that's like your magical ability. You don't let the society or your family or your friends or whatever dictate what you're able to do. You have taken the power to do to decide what is for you, what is not for you, who you are and who you are not. And you're very multifaceted. I really hear that. And you're also not afraid, again, to live outside of the norm, to thread to tread unknown paths, to live outside your comfort zone. And I think that's where, um, that what, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes you stand out. So you might have very unique lifestyle. You might have very unique family dynamics. You might be in unique relationships, unique jobs. You stand out, my pile number um, two, in the sense of... You're the pathfinder, you're the explorer, you're the pioneer. So you try something before others You're and you're not afraid to, again, go outside of the norm to be a little bit of a, not, I wouldn't say a disruptor, but at least someone who is not afraid sometimes to swim against the current. And I'm also hearing trendsetter. So maybe something that you were into, you then notice like five years later, people are getting into it. <laughs> This is why I'm getting a curious vibe. It's funny because I sense that for some of you it's annoying, but you just have this ability to foresee what's fashionable a little bit ahead of everyone. And by the time people are into it, you've already moved on to the next thing. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Let's have a look now. I want to put some tarot cards around what are your unique abilities. So we know a little bit more around who you are in terms of like your, magi your magician archetype, what makes you unique. But I want to look at now your unique abilities. So imagine if you were a superhero, what would be your superpowers? But for a day to day life, <laughs> for the life we live in right now, what are your, your metaphorical superpowers? What are your abilities? What are the powers that you can tap into to make your life easier and better? My pile number two. This deck is ginormous, by the way, so <laughs> it's a little bit hard to shuffle, but it's one of my favorite decks, so I forgive it. Okay, unique abilities for my pile number two. Four of Cups. Yeah. Unique abilities. The Empress. Wow. Okay. Honestly, yes. <laughs> things here there is first with this four of cups the ability to see beauty in every situation but more so the ability to see magic in every situation where people might see failure you see opportunity so where people might see oh this is going to be difficult i don't know if i can do it you again i'm getting this whole like hold my beer or hold my coffee <laughs> or hold my water whatever and doing it anyway so where people might feel um, a little bit overwhelmed you actually thrive from a challenge from a hurdle or something like that because again i sense that you are very comfortable outside of your comfort zone you're not afraid to um, overcome your fear and of course you're human so of course you have fears of course you might have anxious moments stressful moments but one of your superpowers is your ability to quickly overcome them and to not let them become blockages with this four of cups it's the ability to overcome boredom overcome apathy and to always find something exciting to go after and to look forward to so this is why i was saying some of you might be into a ton of different hobby, hobbies and breaking down the archetypes like some of you I'm honestly getting like I don't even know how you are doing everything you're doing because I feel like for some of you your calendar is crazy like you might be giving your time to being a firefighter plus uh, do, being part of a book club plus being into crochet plus being in scouts plus having three dogs and kids plus 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 <laughs> like this is these are all random examples but i wouldn't be surprised if some of you have very busy calendars if you're part of a lot of clubs a lot of communities if you do a lot you have a lot of hobbies because you always find something exciting to do like i sense that 
um, you were not the type of people to ever feel boredom because you always have a new project, a new passion, a new avenue you want to explore. Remember the Pathfinder. The Empress, which by the way, this card is so beautiful. I need to bring it closer. With the Empress, we also have one of your unique abilities, being able to find and nurture abundance in what is already present among you. So it's your ability to enjoy the present moment. It's your ability to um, find joy into simple life things, but through a simple repetition of having your favorite coffee every day, watching your favorite shows, noticing the way the sun hits your coffee table in the morning, really being in the present moment when your kids give you a hug or when your pet comes to, to lick your face, really being present when your colleagues are speaking to you and you're sharing a laugh or when a stranger smiles at you on the bus because you have this strong ability to be present and to ground yourself in the moments and to find joy in all the little simple moments, all of these add up to create a beautiful life. So this also might be why you are the pathfinder is because you have developed this ability to collect life little treasure and to almost string them like a pearl necklace that you wear on you at all times. Simple but beautiful life moment. You find the ability to always get back on your horse and to always like push yourself and to always challenge yourself because you know how precious and beautiful life can be so i think the empress as one of your superpowers thing like i was saying your ability to cultivate not like abundance around you but not necessarily money it could just be abundance of friends abundance of beautiful memories abundance of love um, there's a lot of way we cultivate abundance in our life there's also the idea of cultivating nourishing energies, kind energies, this very much like beautiful Venusian energy from Venus, which is nourishing your ability to, like I was saying, find new paths, push yourself, be a leader or be an example or just be someone who's like in this pioneer idea. And remember, you chose the Herkima with expansion, which is very telling um, because I feel like my Palamatu, you're really not afraid of expansion because you don't let yourself be put in a box ever and I think that's also part of your unique abilities that's definitely a strength so let's now put some cards around what can help you tap into your abilities more we know now a little bit more about what makes you unique but how can you tap into that side of yourself better my pile number two let's see How can you tap into your abilities a little bit more? Okay, we have the Sun card. And we have the Queen of Wands, yep. <laughs> this is why I was getting Aries vibe earlier. There might even be some Leos or Sagittarius here too. Um, that, would, that wouldn't be surprising. Let me put her here because those cards, like I said, are huge. So we had the Queen of Wands and we had the sun card. How you can tap into that particular nurturing but also like adventurous side of yourself is through following your passion. Follow, and with the sun and the queen of wands, we're all about inner fire. We're all about that solar plexus chakra, that sacral chakra, that inner fire, that passion, that creativity, that sensuality, that sexuality, that drive that we have inside us, that burn that we feel uh, when we get excited about the things we're passionate about. So the reason why you're able to bust through any box the reason why you are a pathfinder and a pioneer and living potentially outside of the norm is because you follow what makes you feel alive, is because you follow this very big passionate side, this exciting side, the side that wants to go after their dreams, their desire. And so your creative side is very strong. And that's definitely something that's coming through here is how you can tap into this side of yourself and your inner magician, follow your creativity, let yourself play, let yourself have fun with the queen of wands and the sun. You are at your best when you're having fun. You are the most efficient at your job when you're having fun you're the best in your relationships when you're having fun and so that's truly what 
is like driving you is your creative side your passionate side you are not someone who is going to thrive necessarily on routine things have to get excited things have to feel new and so maybe you're not someone who is necessarily the best at finishing a project but you're definitely very good at getting it started and we need both we need people who are great at raising things from the ground at like starting a project at getting ideas at feeling that inner passion to gather that energy to lead the way to be the pioneer which you are and then we also need people who are just thriving in the routine who are good at committing to long-term things and who maybe are not the best at finding the ideas to get stuff started but are very reliable and committed to see things through which i don't feel like you are <laughs> my panel number two and no tea no shade because i'm not either right I'm definitely more like you guys in terms of much better at starting things and finishing them. In that sense, I think this is why you had the archetype of like the pathfinder for you to tap into that side of yourself is through, like I was saying, having fun, um, may not being afraid to like starting lots of new things, to continually feel excited, even if that means you're learning something new every week, even if it means you're doing that and then you're moving on to the next thing and then you're moving on to the next thing, it's okay. It's what drives you, it's what fuels you, and you should embrace that. And so I feel like you might have this innovator side within yourself, right? Which is this manifestor side within yourself. Last guidance, if your inner magician could speak to you right now, what would they like to tell you? Let's see what comes through. One last advice. We had a little jumper. And what does he say? Turn your worry into wonder, surrender to the experience. What possibilities can you dream into reality? Exactly. I think for my panel number two, truly the sky is the limit. You don't have anything boxing yourself in. Your mind, your creativity and your ambitions are your only limits. So you are in charge of deciding how far you can go, how wide you can dream, um, how much you can fly. And like it's all coming from your ability to imagine, to create. Super strong manifester vibe from my panel number two. Uh, super strong, um, like I was saying, vibe of like not being afraid to try new things, not being afraid to be different, not being afraid to shine your own unique light and to find your own way. And I think that's very beautiful. So my panel number two, that's what I'm seeing for you today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't hesitate to give my video a thumbs up. It does really help my channel out. It actually keeps it alive. So thank you for being here. If you want to leave a comment, I'd love to read you and I respond to all of my comments. And of course, if you want to follow me along for hashtag your fool's journey and watch all of the future reading, make sure to subscribe. I'm super excited about taking on this adventure together. And until my next video, I'm sending you so much good vibes and keep navigating the waves of your soul. Bye. Okay, my panel number three, welcome to your reading. So if you chose this particular deck with this magician, which is actually from the tarot called Tarot by Caro, I will leave the names of all the decks I use in the description box because I know there's plenty of tarot lovers out there. This is what you chose or if you chose this particular crystal card which was the blue calcite for peace then this is going to be the reading for you. As I mentioned in the description box today we are looking at your inner magician and what makes you unique, what makes you stand out, your unique abilities, what makes you shine, all of that good stuff. We're going to be putting some tarot cards of course but first I want to find out what your current magical archetype is, is your magician right now so for my panel number three what is your magical archetype what makes you unique and we have wanderer okay okay so with the wanderer the first thing i'm hearing is free spirit so my panel number three you might be very free spirited in the sense that nothing really um can tame you down in or at least in the sense that you're full of you've got a lot of passion you've got a lot of energy you're someone who's burning for a lot of things uh, you might be very passionate you might have a lot of things that you are enjoying but also with the wanderer i see you being an explorer so the there's a previous pile that has a similar archetype but i think that and i won't tell you which one in case you want to watch further but i think the difference here is like for the previous pile it was more around pushing the boundaries living outside the comfort zone and showing the way to others 
for you, it's all about self-exploration and all about discovery. I see you being super curious in panel number three. Like, there's an aspect of you which is very curious and who wants to discover, who wants to understand, who wants to explore. So you might have been super curious ever since you were a child. You might be the kids who were like, why is the sky blue and why are the cows black and white and why do they eat grass? And <laughs> just those little kids who always ask why 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 because you want to understand the world around you you're curious you ask questions you question things and you inquire others yourself you are curious by nature and you have this idea of like explorer of the self explorer of the world and wanting to understand i think it really comes from a desire to understand and a desire to dislike Explore the world to see what's out there, discovering new culture. I think my panel three, you might even be people who speak different languages. You might be people who have traveled the world or who love like watching documentaries about different parts of the world. Reading, You might love reading books about different culture. You might love mythology or you might love like science and learning about how the universe works and all of that stuff. I see you having big inquiry mind is that a word just being very curious and having this desire to understand to explore and to see it by your own eyes i think you're also seeking to make your own truth like i think my panel is three you are not necessarily the type of people who will be told one thing and automatically believe it you're like okay this is interesting but i want to make my own opinion like i appreciate hearing everyone's opinions but I want to make my own so I don't think you are necessarily easily um, influenced either I think you are the kind of people who do research who inquire who read who ask questions because you want to make sure that your mind is your own and that the values you carry that the choices you make that the beliefs that you're hold are yours and not influenced by anyone else but you definitely like the magical archetype i'm getting is someone who is like i was saying asks a lot of questions very curious wants to understand how things work wants to hear everyone's point of view you're very good as well i think my panel number three at holding two opposite knowledges or two opposite facts in hand and being able to see both point of views. So I think you are mediators in that way and people might come to you to find equilibrium and balance because I think you have a strong ability, my panel number three, to look at different perspectives and to kind of like not be the devil's advocates, but you're able to understand where people come from, even when they come from opposite sides. Doesn't mean you don't have your values. Of course, there's things that you stand strongly proud of and that you want to defend. But I think you have an ability to see the world as not black and white, but to being able to see things from different perspectives, even when on paper, those perspectives are opposite and shouldn't gel. You're able to understand where people might come from on both sides. So I see you as also being very just and fair. And there is this Libra vibe I'm getting from my pile number three, because I'm seeing justice card in my mind's eye. So there might be this idea of equilibrium of balance of fairness um, in my pile number three. Like people might be naturally attracted to you to ask for advice in the sense because they know you're very fair and you're going to be able to be weighing both sides but find where the truth is because you are someone again who's always looking for truth you are curious you ask questions and that allows you to be fair at the end of the day because you're not letting yourself be told one thing and just running with it. You you did want to make your own opinion about things. You want to do your research so that you are able to make the right decisions for you. And that, I think, gives you a more fair, just out view of the world. I think the fact that you are also potentially very open to other people's cultures or other people's point of views, other people's religions, whatever it is, I see you very open-minded also brings a lot of wisdom to you and that comes through in the wanderer is reading like i said like i wouldn't be surprised if some of you have read the bible and the quran and um you know texts from buddhism like 
just being open to understanding spirituality from all point of view and seeing something valuable in all of them or if you are again someone who's like speaking different languages or learning from a lot of different cultures like this wanderer archetype is truly coming in the sense of both someone who wants to understand but also someone who wants to explore and someone who understands the value of multiple opinions of multiple point of views and of community in a sense so that's what i'm getting in terms of your magical archetype which is already super interesting you're very interesting my palmistry I, I see you as being um, very interesting people too you would have like fascinating conversations because i can see you being interested in so many different things so that makes you like super interesting um i want to pull some cards around what are your magical unique ability imagine you were a superhero this would be your superpower but for day-to-day -day regular life so what are your current unique abilities at this moment in time that you have Whoop. the high event yeah see the world and the Ace of Swords. See, I'm not surprised. This is the vibe I was getting like from fairness and also the idea with the world and the higher friend. I'm going back to the idea of I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of if like in my palm three I have people who are have been curious about world spirituality, world religion, and who have been reading texts from all the different angles just because they're curious they want to understand and they want to find the past that's right for them even though you might be atheist i think some of you were still curious to read about why do other people believe in it and what's their point of view and what is um you know their like beliefs and stuff like that so my pal number three i think you're also philosophers i wouldn't be surprised if you read a lot of philosophy we're going back to this asking questions and to being very curious into what's going on in the world you want to hear about other people's opinion you might be someone who listens to podcasts someone who reads autobiographies and biographies because you want you want an insight into what's going on outside of yourself you want to hear what other people have lived through because you find a lot of ideas and a lot of like inspiration there so your unique ability is your ability to be open-minded your ability to like i was saying before see two different things and find the common ground there you're very wise. I'm definitely getting this from my palm mystery. Old souls wise. Um, if you believe in reincarnation, I don't believe this is your first time. This is not your first rodeo, my palm mystery. For those of you who believe in that, I know you know that. This is not your first rodeo and maybe this is where your wisdom comes from maybe you realize that there is a lot of wisdom in listening to what other people have to say in opening ourselves to others. I think your mind in terms of your ideas your clarity your ability to solve problems is so a huge um, unique ability of yours like i can sense you're very intelligent you are very street smart and you are able to solve problems and you are able to see solutions and you are able to find ideas and you're like you have truly your mind your intelligence is part of your unique ability your brain is truly unique and able to solve things that most people wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised as well if my pile number three was my pile of uh, neurodivergent people where your mind is unique but it's also your superpower because you're able to look at things differently you're able to have this unique perspective and to cut through the fog in order to find solutions, in order to find new perspective, in order to seek clarity, to see ideas. So your mind, your brain is your superpower, my pal number three, your intelligence, your ability to like, yeah, I see your quick mind. And it's not necessarily the intelligence that we might associate with higher learning. Although I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have done PhDs, masters and, and stuff like that. But it's more so all the idea of a mind who's very quick. You're very sharp, my pal number three. And I think also that's part of your unique abilities. And maybe that's why you're interested in so many things and why you ask so many questions and why you're so curious. is because you actually are able to understand a lot of things that people just aren't necessarily able to they just don't have necessarily the ability to understand the things that you do so we might also have some high potential people in my palmus where again i wouldn't be surprised here um so that's interesting let me know in the comments if that speaks to you now we know a little bit more what your abilities are what your superpowers are what makes you unique how can you tap into that side of your more how can you let your inner magician speak more 
two, we had two jumper, we have the two of cups and we have the nine of cups. Okay, that's interesting. So with the two of cups and the nine of cups, how you can tap into your mind is actually through making sure that you are pursuing what makes you feel good, first of all, with this nine of cups. It's like you won't be able to use your brilliant ideas, you won't be able to use your wisdom unless you are pursuing after things that make you feel fulfilled and that make you feel like you have purpose. And we also have the idea here of community and of connection. So I think you're at your best, my pile number three, when you're able to share what you've learned. So you might have a great mind, you might have so many great ideas, you might have a point of view that's very unique, and like I was saying you are like able to answer a lot of questions that people have because you understand the world in a way that a lot of people don't but it feels very lonely until you're actually able to share that with others so maybe some of you are great teachers even if you're not necessarily professional teachers you might just have this archetype within you of someone who loves to share who loves to impart who loves to connect and with a wanderer again i see this vibe of like wanting to connect if you let's say some of you love traveling because you love discovering new culture i sense that when you travel you don't want to stay in the hotels and just be the tourist who visits the sites and go back to the hotel. No, you're the type of people who probably want to sleep at someone's house, at a local's house, so that you can truly engage in the culture, learn the language, maybe even learn how to cook the meal of the place you're in and connect with the people who are live there to truly integrate yourself into the lives and the places that you visit. It's an example, but like I feel like you can apply that to different aspects of life. I truly see you desire to connect as one of your way to boost this like all these abilities that you have and i think your desire to connect also brings you fulfillment because when you help others when you meet others when you connect with others when you share with others it brings a lot of fulfillment it brings a lot of healing of love of nurturing which makes you thrive and which only increases your ability to find solutions to problems to see new perspective and to like develop all the things we've been talking about so i think that's how you can help into your abilities more my pile number three is like not being afraid to connect with others if you're a little bit shy or you're a little bit scared of community and of like connecting with others this is actually a kind of like encouragement to say that it would bring you a lot of um, fulfillment it would bring you a lot of joy and i think my pile number three truly the reason why potentially you ask a lot of questions is also to find where you belong which is something that we're all looking for as humans but for you specifically belonging could be a very important theme and your abilities to see the world differently is actually helping you find the places the city the communities the relationships the jobs the avenues where you are truly shining and where you do really truly belong so i think that's very beautiful and that's how you're making your path my pile number three and maybe with the wanderer sometimes you feel lost and sometimes you feel like you don't know where you're going but again I'm going back to the thing which is the first thing I heard not all those who wander are lost and so for you you might be trying a lot of different things you might have lived a thousand lives already you might have been doing a lot of different jobs in your lifetime you might have been learning so many different things but it doesn't mean that you haven't found your place it just means that you are constantly seeking looking and you're someone who just finds joy in that find fulfillment in that particular in a quest and in that particular path which is very beautiful so i want to ask one last guidance if your inner magician could speak to you right now what would they tell you an advice for whatever you're going through right now at the moment of you watching let's see an advice from your inner magician for my pile number three and we have the collective field is impacting you, unseen force in actions. How can you relinquish control of the situation that feels blocked? This is for everyone who feels responsible as to what's going on in your life right now. If there's anything a little bit sticky or difficult you're facing 
and you are thinking, why did this happen? What did I do? Is there a mistake? Did I make a mistake? Did I make a wrong choice or anything like that? This is telling you it's not coming from you. It's coming from something external to you. So the best thing you can do right now is put some boundaries, protect your energy and potentially relinquish control, letting go a little bit. You don't have to feel responsible for everything. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes it's our own failures or our own shortcomings but sometimes truly it's just the universe is throwing some obstacles in our way and there's nothing we can do about it but just weather the storm so if any of you need to hear that right now relieve some guilt then just this is the message to let go specific message but let me know if that resonates for you okay my pal number three that's what i'm getting for today's reading i hope you enjoyed it if you didn't hesitate to leave it my video a thumbs up or leave me a comment it's a small exchange of energy but it does keep my channel alive Live. Of course, if you're not yet subscribed, I invite you to do so, especially because, like I said, we're going to be doing one reading for every 22 major arcana. So this was The Magician, but there's plenty more to come, so make sure to subscribe. And until my next video, I'm sending you so much good vibes and keep navigating the waves of your soul. Bye!